So today I want to show you how to uh, correctly connect a GFCI outlet and have a second outlet, which is a standard outlet, to behave as a GFCI outlet. So that's the nice thing about these GFCI outlets. They allow you to connect other outlets to them and uh, be able to take advantage of the functionality of the GFCI. Where would you use a GFCI outlet? Uh, where we are in Texas, uh, anywhere that you are within six feet of a water source. So a good example would be in a kitchen close to a sink. You have to have a GFCI outlet. Let's take a look at the GFCI outlet and see the connections. This circuit is turned off right now. We'll flip it over. And what you have on this GFCI is one side, which is up here. We have our uh, line coming in. This is coming from the breaker. So this is our uh, line and a neutral. And you can see the word line written on this. Uh, let's see if I can get it in good lighting here. There we go. Right there, it says line. Okay. And then on the bottom side, where we have our second outlet connected, we have the word uh, right here. It says load. And I'll throw up a, a diagram. So these two sets of terminals are different and they behave differently. So you have to make sure that they're connected correctly, meaning that your power that comes in, it comes into line. And then the second outlet, if you have one that you want it to behave same as a GFCI outlet, needs to be connected to what's designated as a load. And just like any other outlet, they have connections for the neutral and they have the connections for the line. And um, the uh, ground is uh, also uh, critical in these. So you have to make sure you have the ground hooked up as well. There are two different types of testers. One that has this little button on it and one that doesn't. The one that has the button is used to check outlets to see if they behave like a GFCI outlet. What the button does, it creates a fault. So I'll show you how it works. Before uh, we move forward, I'm going to go ahead and uh, warn you that if you are using a live um, circuit, make sure you take precautions so you don't get uh, electrocuted. Now we're going to go live. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so we are live now. And this one actually has a little light here that's on green. Each manufacturer uses a different method to indicate that the um, GFCI outlet is working or not. In this particular case, green means we're good to go. All right, so this GFCI outlet has two buttons on it. And let me see if I can bring it up here without getting electrocuted. Yep. So the top one, it says, the red one says reset and the black one says test. So whenever you want to test this GFCI, if you don't have any devices like this, you can just simply press the test. And now the GFCI um, faulted. So our green light is out. To get it out of the fault and to do a reset, we press the reset button and now it's green. So we plug our tester to our uh, second outlet because this is what we want to use a tester for to test and see if this outlet is connected correctly and it behaves as a GFCI outlet. As you can see, the two amber lights are on, means everything's good. Our uh, uh, connections are correct. Now to create a fault, that's where the switch comes into play. So I wanna flip it over here, that way you guys can see it. By pressing this switch, what it should do, if it's wired correctly, 
it should fault out our GFCI outlet, take the power away from this outlet, as well as uh, putting this outlet into a fault. So here we go. All right, so the outlet turned off. This outlet is in, is in fault now. We're back to um, fully functional outlets. As far as how many of these outlets can you have on one GFCI outlet, it all depends what the length of the uh, wire is, what the GFCI outlet is rated for. Hope you uh, like this video, and uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. And if you like what you see out of this channel, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.